It is a period of civil war. The spaceships of the rebels striking swift from base unseen have gained a victory o'er the cruel galactic empire now adrift. Amidst the battle, rebel spies prevailed and stole the plans to a space station vast whose powerful beams will later be unveiled and crush a planet. Tis the Death Star blast, pursued by agents sinister and cold. Now Princess Leia to her home doth flee, delivering plans and a new hope they hold of bringing freedom to the galaxy. In times so long ago begins our play in star-crossed galaxy far, far away. Act One Scene one, aboard the rebel ship. Now is the summer of our happiness, made winter by this sudden fierce attack. Our ship is under siege, I know not how. Oh, hast thou heard? The main reactor fails. We shall most surely be destroyed by this. I'll warrant madness lies herein. Beep, 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 meep, squeak, beep, 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 wee. We're doomed. The princess shall have no escape this time. I fear the battle doth pretend the end of the rebellion. Oh, what misery. Get thou attack prepared. Weapons ready. Now watch amazed as swiftly through the door the army of the Empire flieth in. And as the troopers through the passage pour, they murder several dozen rebel men. Get going. D2, where art thou? Beep, beep. At last, where hast thou been? I fear they come in this direction. Pray, what shall we do? My circuitry o'erloads, my mind overthrown, and fear hath put its grip into my wires. We shall be sent into that place I dread. The castle spy's mind whence no droid returns, and there be blasted into who knows what. Anon, anon, Artu, where dost thou go? O oh, prithee, patience, leave me not alone. I, even though I mock and injure thee, I'll surely die if ere thou leaves me. The Death Star plans we could not find herein, nor are they on the main computer, Lord. In short, they are not here, and there's an end. Thou speakest well, my stormtrooper, and yet not well upon my ear the message falls. I turn to thee, thou rebel, I, I lift thy head above my own. Thou canst now choose to keep thy secrets locked safe inside that head, and therefore lose the life thou holdest dear, or else to keep thy head and thus thy life. My patience runneth quickly out, much like the sands across the dunes of Tatooine. So tell me, else thou diest quick, where shall we find transmissions thou didst intercept? What hast thou done, say, with those plans? My lord! My head and life I value. Certain it is. And yet to thee I must report we have not intercepted. One transmission! This is a consular ship, and nothing more. On a diplomatic mission. Thou knave, with thy last breath hear thou this word. If this is but a consular ship, 
Then where is the ambassador? Commander, privy go. Rend thou this ship apart until the plans are found, and bring me any passengers. Upon thy life I want them brought alive. Aye, sir. And so, another dies by my own hand. This hand, which now encased in blackness is. Oh, that the fingers of this wretched hand had not the pain of suffering ever known. But now my path is joined unto the dark and wicked men, whose hands and fingers move to crush their foes, are now my company. So shall my fingers ever undertake to do more evil. I, and this, my hand, shall do the Emperor's bidding evermore. And thus we see how fingers presage death, and hands become the instruments of fate. Hey, there is one. My comrade Zephyr's done. She shall be well. Go now. Inform the dread Lord Vader we have caught a prisoner. And may Mos Eisley drinks flow swift and free when Vader grants rewards for work well done. Hold! Thou art not permitted to go in. Deactivated thou shalt surely be. Beep, 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 beep. Thou shalt not label me a mindless brute philosopher. Nay, nay, thou overladen glob of grease. Thou imp, thou rubbish bucket fit for scrap. Thou blue and silver pile of banther dung. Now come and get thee hence away, lest someone sees. Beep, 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 squeak, beep, 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 wee. What secret omission? And what plans? What dost thou talk about? I'll surely not get in. I warrant, I'll regret this, so say I. This golden droid has been a friend, tis true, and yet I wish to steal his prattin' tongue. An imp, he calleth me. I'll be revenged, and merry pranks are plenty I shall play upon this pompous droid, C-3PO. Yet not in language shall my pranks be done. Around both humans and the droids I must be seen to make such errant beeps and squeaks that they shall think me simple. Truly, though, although with sounds oblique I speak to them, I clearly see how I shall play my part, and how a vast rebellion shall succeed by wit and wisdom of a simple droid. Now climb the metal pair into the pod, which shooteth from the ship like laser blast. And to the planet's face as straight as rod, the capsule takes the droids by power vast. There strays another one. Pray hold thy fire, for certain there are no life forms aboard. And truly what may be the chance that aught but life alone could fly within that pod? The rebels could not be so cunning bold to put the Death Star plans therein. If I were one to bet, I'd stake my life on it. All's well that endeth well, so say the wise, and so that pod shall live to land below. Tis but a jest I, surely we are mocked. For R2-D2, plainly canst thou see, the damage looks but minor from below. Can thou be sure this pod is safe? Oh. Darth Vader, only thou couldst be so bold. When first my ship was under siege, I knew twas thee who had this peaceful vessel sacked. The Imperial Senate shall not stand for this, for when they hear thou hast attacked a ship on diplomatic mission... Highness Peace, be thou not so surprised, for well thou knowest a mercy mission this was not this time. Thine innocent appearance doth disguise a heart with revolution at its core. Aye, several transmissions were there beamed unto this ship by rebel spies. I want to know what happened to the plans they sent. And prithee, speak thou well, or speak thy last. For fairer necks than thine my hand hath crushed. Thine idle threat is meaningless to me. My neck, my tongue, my mouth, these instruments of speech have not the power to relate the knowledge that thou seekest. For certain tis I know nothing of what thou ask of me. For I am but a member of the great Imperial Senate, bound for Alderaan, on mission diplomatic. Nay, thou liest, for thou art with the Rebel Alliance vile, and worse, a traitor. Take this one away. 
and the blood and wires within me leap with fire when all these traitorous words I must endure. Lord, holding her is dangerous. If word of this is told, then sympathy may rise for the rebellion in the Senate's mind. So shall our power over all the universe be weakened by this wicked, cunning wretch. Tis like the tale my mother told me once of bygone emperor whose reign was lost when putrid Argnauts rose against his throne. So hath my mother said, and I with her, A deathly blow oft comes from tiny fist, and greatest tree may fall by smallest axe. Commander, peace and trouble not thy mind with tales of old. The princess shall reveal her treachery when all's to do is done. The rebel spies are aptly traced to her, and now she is my only link to find the hidden rebel base. I'll wager she'll die ere she tells thee. Leave that to me. Now go, be on thy way and take this task. Send thou a signal of distress, and then inform the Senate all aboard were killed. So shall our presence here be hid from sight, and thus our swift attack shall not be known. Lord Vader, sorry am I to report, there are no battle plans aboard this ship, and neither were transmissions made. There was but one escape pod jettisoned amid the fighting, but no life forms were aboard. For certain, t'was a harmless accident. With purpose, Rank, must she have quickly hid the plans in the escape pod. Woman vile! How e'er could she deceive my subtle mind? The plans in the escape pod! Oh, most rare! Pray cease thy speech and mark ye what I say. Take thou a keen and swift detachment down, and bring me back the plans. Commander, go! See to the task thyself before the chime. There shall be none to stop our plan this time. And now, dear viewers, shall our play go to a planet stark and drear for our next scene. Imagine sand and rocks within thy view. Prepare thy souls. We fly to... Tatooine. Forsooth, how did we get into this mess? I tell thee verily, I know not how. A thousand torn torn bowels could not produce a greater desecration than this place. Alas, we too are made for suffering. I fear, R2, tis but our lot in life. More than six million forms of speech I know, yet not a one shall help me now. Beep, beep. Now must I rest before I come apart. My joints are nearly frozen. I, I freeze, for tis as though the vicious cold of death hath sunken deep into my circuitry. Oh, what a desolate terrain this is. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Where dost thou think, thou ghost? Beep, beep, beep. Now shall I leave his company a while. Be like my absence shall alleviate his obstinate resolve and teach him thoughts of kindness, care, and good humility. Well, I shall not go thither with thee, droid. Tis far too rocky. Canst thou not perceive? Nay, truly, for the sun upon thy cold and hard exterior hath surely warped thine often prudent mind. Pray understand, the road herein is better far. Why dost thou think that settlements will be found yon? Beep, beep. Be thou not technical with me, or else thine input valve may swift receive a hearty helping of my golden foot. Beep, squeak. More of thee I shall not take, so go thou hence. Thou shalt malfunction ere the day is through, nearsighted pile of scrap. Now mayst thou travel hence upon thy way and find thy mission in a sarlacc pit. Then shalt thou know for lo these thousand years the pain I suffer as thy counterpart. And be thou not behind me, arrant knave. I mark me, follow not, nor seek thou help, for thou no satisfaction shalt receive. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 squeak, squeak, squeak. No more with thine adventures. I go not upon thy way. Malfunctioning small fool. Tis all his fault. He tricked me so that I should go his way. But he shall not fare well. O oh, gods above, why have I once again been short with R2, sending him away? I trust he knoweth well I hold him dear, though in his presence oft my speech is cruel. 
Tis words that do betray my better self, when harshly they express my droidly rage. And yet for protocol I made, and must with words fulfil my task. So then tis true, that words are both my ruin and my strength. And yet although I find myself adrift, and lost within a speechless sea of sand, this word is true, if ever words have truth. Forever lost I'd be, should I lose him? But wait, what's that? A transport? Saved am I. Hark! Over here! Hey, nonny non! Please help! A vessel vast comes forth across the sand and takes C-3PO within its hold. And what of R2-D2's mission grand? How doth the tale of this small droid unfold? Imagine now that on this stage you see full many droids and creatures quite bizarre, and yet amid this ghastly company, herein the two friends reunited are. Good R2, R2D2, oh, tis thee! There was someone within this pod, indeed. The tracks go off in this direction, see? Behold, sir, either someone large hath dropped his ring, or else this fragile circle here doth mean we have found droids on Tatooine. At last, this vehicle of death hath stopped. So greatly fear I what shall happen next that I am shaken to my core within. They say that fear is better faced when two together stand. Thus swift shall I awake. My dear Artu, wake up, wake up! Beep squeak! We're doomed! Dost thou think thou shall melt us down? Oh, dearie! Shoot not! Oh, shall this torment never end? First captured by these showers, small and vile, and now we face a fate that is unknown. Now seems the first fate better than the next. Hi, rather will I bear the ill I have than fly to others that I know not of. Oh, look. Oh, look. Pray tell thine uncle that if he should find a translator, be sure it bot she speaks. Tis true. The last time Owen bought a droid, more dub than droid, we purchased in the deal. It seemeth we have little choice, dear aunt, and yet shall I remind him what thou sayst. And on, now let us go. Again, it falls to me, a simple man, to take a leading role in matters grave. For I must choose a droid today, tis true, but also must I teach this lad, this Luke, to learn and grow and to become a man. Although when I was young, I too had dreams of far off stars and distant galaxies. I learned to work the land, to raise the crops. And thus shall I, my trade pass on to him, adopted son of mine, and strangely dear. I had not asked for fate to bring a son to me, for I thought to have no heir. Yet to brew and I feel for this child, a measure of affection and, as well, a burden of responsibility. Pray tell me, Jawa Small, what hast thou today? We born a diamond thing. Eat there. Nay, not that one. These Jawas offer first the lowliest. Tis ever in their nature to deceive. Droid, I assume thou art programmed well in etiquette and protocol. Tis true. Aye, protocol, my primary function tis. I am well versed in all the customs, sir. No need of I have droids with protocol. Not in this habitat, thou speakest true. Hath ever sand a need of protocol? When did a stone or rock need etiquette? However, I am also made... Peace. What I need is a droid who knows the binary tongue of moisture evaporators. Oh, but sir, my first employment was in programming. A binary load, a lifter very like thy evaporators, I in most respects. My service and my worth I'll prove to him if I must speak a thousand hours more. For certain... I shall die ere I return, once more to be in rank captivity. 
Well, speaks thou, Bocci? Truly, sir, tis like a second tongue unto my soul. Pray, cease. So, shall I have this one here? Praise the day. Now, if he chooseth also my R2, I then shall I be pleased. Luke, take thou these droids unto our vast garage. My wish is it they be cleaned here before we dine. But on to Tosh Station would I go, and there obtain some power converters. Fie! Thou canst go with thy friends another time, when all thy chores have been fulfilled. Go to! Oh, how shall I be mocked and verily abused when my noble comrades hear that once again my uncle hath denied my fervent wish to be with them instead? Tis well. Come hither, thou too, Red. Go hence. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, sweep, beep, beep, sweep, beep, beep, beep. If I go not with him, my foolishness shall render to no service. Thus I beep. <laughs> Pray, Uncle Owen, look, behold, this R2 unit hath a foul and smoking motivator. Vicious knave, say in what manner dost thou try upon our goodly wills to ply thy thievery? So, shall I rip thy brown and ragged robes to shreds, if thou set not this matter right? Now, speak. We wanna bleed. Beep, squeak. Your pardon, sir. The R2 unit, which thou seest, is in prime condition. I... A bargain tis, and he shall serve thee well. Now, if I can convince the humour here to purchase R2 too, along with me, so shall I win the day, and ever shall yon R2-D2 dwell in peace with me. What shall he answer? What of that blue one? That one shall be ours. Oh, victory! Next I'll praise him for his choice. A noble choice thou makest, master, for thou shalt surely be pleased with this new droid. I can with confidence report to thee that he is in first-class condition, sir, for I have worked with him before. He comes. Beep, 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 squeak. Forget thou not this moment, faithless droid. Why I should put my neck at risk for thee is quite beyond my mind's capacity. All praise be to the maker, verily. This oily bath much healing shall provide. The glow of bright coruscant doth not match the vital warmth this soothing oil brings me. The case of dust contamination, which befalls me mighty, and renders me unable, I'll be sworn to move at all. I rue the day I came unto this place, this drab and barren rock call it Tatooine. But wherefore have I reason to complain? Do sandstorms not invade both the rich and poor? We are not promised the equity in life, both rich and poor alike pertain to me. For certain, though in toil I am, am I most rich, by want of keen adventure am I poor. Thus I declare that whether rich or poor, the lot I have received from fates unfair. My comrade Briggs hath rightly guessed I fear, that never shall I leave this stricken place. Oh, exclamation tragic. Shall I speak? Is there, dear sir, aught I might do to help? Nay, droid, lest thou canst alter time, or make the harvest come a space or goodly friend, if thou canst somehow bear my body hence by magical conveyance yet unknown. I think not, sir, for merely droid am I, and have not knowledge of such things as thou. Not on this planet, anyway. In troth, I do not know which planet this one be. If centre bright the universe contains, then surely, droid, hast thou now find thyself as far from it as thou canst possibly be. I see, sir. Surely thou mayst. Call me Luke. I see, sir Luke. Thou jolly droid, just Luke. This droid, I see, is wont to prattle on, be like his mouth is faster than his mind. See, 3 po am I, an expert in the human cyborg link, and he, my short blue counterpart, is R2-D2 called... Good e'en. Beep squeak. Thou hast much carbon here. It seemeth much of fortune thou hast known. Ay, can it be that two such droids as you can know more of adventure than a man? With all we have been through, amazed am I, we yet our good condition keep, what with rebellion and its hurly-burly ways. Nay, can it be? The very thing of which I would know more thou hast experienced? Pray, knowest thou of the rebellion against the Empire droid? The certain, I. Tis how we came to be in thine employment, if thou comprehend my simple meaning, sir. Now is his visage turned all eagerness, who never in this manner have I seen a man intoxicated with a dream. 
And hast thou been in many battles? Speak! Whatever more cell they most serve to me shall be a feast unto my waiting ear. The smallest tale of battle lost or won shall feed my soul's near-ending appetite. Full many battles, I, sir. But I fear I have little food to fill thy heart. A banquet? Sadly, I cannot prepare. Tis certain that of tales I am no chef, but rather I confess that not much more than an interpreter am I. And not much good at telling stories. Verily, I've not the salt or spice to season. Tis well, my droid, so shall my hunger wait to feast one day upon another's tale. My little bot, thou hast got something jammed, herring. Hast thou been on a cruiser, or... I must ask thee to take the droid and bring him onto order and... Pray, what is this? Squeak, what is what? A question hath he asked. Say, what is that? Now help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, help. Thou art mine only hope. Beep, me beep, who? Squeak, beep, me beep. He says tis nothing, sir. But who is she? For she is far more beautiful than all the stars. I truly do not know, sir. I suspect she was a passenger on our last trip. A person of importance, I believe. First was adventure. Second, tis this lass. To certain my new master hath the wealth of passion, ever eager to bestow. Say, is there any more recording, droid? Squeak beep! Behave thyself, R2, for thou shalt get us both in trouble. Be content, and trust him true. He is our master now. Beep, 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 meep, beep, squeak, beep, meep, squeak, who? He saith he doth belong to Obi-Wan Kenobi, a resident of parts nearby, and tis a private message meant for him. For all my wit, I know not what he means, for our last master, Sir Antilles, was. Alas, with all we have endured, this dear, small R2 unit, quite eccentric is. Squeak! Obi one Kenobi, I suspect old Ben Kenobi, he doth mean, perhaps. First droids, then tales of battles fought in space, and now a damsel cries in beams of light. Did ever destiny come knocking thus? I beg thy pardon, sir, but knowst thou aught of what he speaks? I know not any man named Obi Wan Kenobi, yet old Ben resides beyond the Dune Sea and there dwells much like a hermit, strange and lone. Now help me, Obi Wan Kenobi, help. Thou art mine only hope. I wonder who she is, whoever she may be, whatever is her cause. I shall unto her, please respond. Not e'en were she my sister, could I know, a duty of more weight than I feel now. It seemeth she some dreadful trouble hath. Mayhap I should replay the message whole. Beep, squeak, squeak. Meep, who meep. R2 doth say, the bolt restraining him short-circuited his full recording system. So saith he, that if thou wouldst with speed remove the bolts, he may the full recording then display. What purpose shall I serve unto this man? Am I to guide, encourage, counsel, what? Thus shall I play the wise interpreter, for truly tis the part I know the best. What? I, thou, seemst too small to run away? If I should take this off, good little droid, so cleverly thou bringest messages, that thou hast won my trust, now thou, thou art free. But wait! Where hath she gone? What villainy? How hast thou dampered that celestial light? Wherein she spoke of late? Now bring her back. Play back the message full, thou naughty droid. Meep meep. What message, errant droid? The one thou hast been playing, which thou holds within thy rusty innards. Oh, alas, we shall deactivate it be. Oh, Luke. Pray, Luke. I shall be there anon, good Aunt Beru. I'm sorry, sir. For it does seem like he hath acquired a minor flutter. Thus she comes, and thus she goes, yet ever on my sight her beautiful fine countenance shall shine. So here's my vow. I'll see her once again, in beam or hope on hope with my own eyes. For now I must depart to dine, pray see, if thou canst remedy this R2 droid. Who? Reconsider thou, if thou shalt play the message back for him. Beep me who we? Nay, I do not believe he liketh thee. Beep squeak? Nay, the I like not either. Ooh! Now are the pieces all arranged for me to take a daring move and fly this place. The fool who sets the game in motion shall appear unto C-3PO and Luke, no more than if he were an arranged knave. But hear the voice of R2-D2 all. 
my noble purpose I'll accomplish yet to take to Obi-Wan the princess's news, to take my master Luke away from here, and, in the end, perhaps more vital still, to make connections twixt the two good men. A foolish thing this flight may seem to thee, and yet more fine than foolish shall it be. Mine, uncle, thou shouldst know my mind. Methinks the R2 unit we have bought belike may have been stolen. Thee three hath here been part and parcel of the Jawas trade, but in thine utterance I sense there's more. So, say, young Luke, why thinkest thou thereon? Good uncle, well, I know the Jawas tricks, yet as thou sayst I mean something more. A stolen moment with those droids hath shown to me a reason they may stolen be. I did uncover a recording whilst I cleaned the R2 unit. He purports to be the property of someone known as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thus thought I that he may be stolen be as to the name. This Obi-Wan Kenobi wondered I if mayhap you meant Ben. Canst thou make sense? Nay. Yet I wonder if this Obi-Wan perchance may be kin to yonder Ben. Fee, fee, shall that... Old man now haunt my home? That wizard is a damn scurvy man. Tomorrow shalt thou take the R2 droid tank ahead and have its memory erased. And so shall there an end be to it. For it belongeth only to us now. I? Yet what if this Obi-Wan appears and lays his claim onto this R2 droid? What stolen may be worth the looking for? The looking shall not happen, nor the find. For I believe the man doth not exist. Now... Shall I by a lie destroy the man, lest he be given a new life in Luke's young mind? The boy a keen imagination hath. This Obi-Wan hath not for ages walked within this universe. He is no more. T'was many moons ago the old man died. Aye, truly, he hath met his end about the time so long ago when wars were fought. The time when men did battle to the grave. The time before the Empire ruled supreme. And wherein thy father died as well. Knew he my father? Though I tell of men and wars and battles brave, still all he hears is that word, Father. Privy Luke, forget. Thy task is to prepare the droids for work tomorrow. In the morning shall they be upon the south ridge, labouring with those condensers. Aye, and I believe these droids shall serve us well. In troth, good uncle, now I must confess, my mind is moved to think upon the pact twixt thee and me, and our agreement namely that I shall stay here another season. Crops that grow in these harsh climes will surely grow sans me. And so, mine uncle, if these droids will satisfy, I wish my application to transmit unto the great academy this year. Nay, Luke, an uncle's heart is breaking. Canst thou mean the next semester hence, before the harvest time? Just so. Quite plentiful are droids. But harvest time I need thee most. Wilt thou here in the desert yet desert? Tis only one more season. This year I shall make enough at harvest time to hire more hands to help. Thou canst thou go next year to the academy. To pilot is a noble trade, my boy, but family is nobler still. I prithee, understand. I need thee, Luke. Tis one more year entire. Tis only one more season. I, so saidest thou when my dear friends Biggs and Tank did leave. Now cracks a hopeful heart when by the land a man's ambitions firmly grounded are. So shall a bird near learn to fly or soar when wings are clipped by crops and roots and soil. Pray, whither fliest thou, Luke? It seems, dear aunt, I nowhere go nor flee nor sail nor fly. Instead, I must remain and clean those droids. Oh, Owen, he cannot abide for I with us. "'Tis true, his friends are mostly gone. "'It hath great meaning for our well-loved Luke. "'This bird would surely fly.' "'So promise I that I shall set all things aright, Baru. "'The bird shall fly indeed when time is ripe, "'when the nest hath no more need of him.' "'But Owen, he hath not a farmer's heart. "'His apple falls quite near his father's tree.' "'Tis true, and this, my dear, is what I fear.' fortune's fall. Tis true, tis true. And gazing now upon the double son of my home Tatooine, I know full well that elsewhere lies my destiny. Not here. Although my uncle's will is that I stay. My heart within me bursts to think on it, for out among the spheres I wish to roam. Adventure and rebellion stir my blood. Those oft-repeated words of mine made big, so I do believe that all the world's a star. Beyond that heavenly light, I shall fly far. Alas, 
my R2-D2, he hath flown, and all the while he beepeth on and on about his duty in rebellion's cause. Oh, with what strength shall I be punished when R2's treachery discovered is? So shall I hide myself behind this ship in hopes I'll not be found by Master Luke. C-3PO, I say, what dost thou there? At what game playest thou, O jolly droid? I prithee, sir, be thou not cross with me. Twas through no fault of mine, in truth I swear. Pray let me not deactivated be. I asked him, I urged him not to go. With sighs and words plenty plied I him, with many earnest pleadings made my cause, and yet he was to me as one made deaf. His metal ears as twid it seemed to plug, as though no word of mine could penetrate, and break upon his sense of hearing. Ho, oh, I fear a cursed malfunction doth befall my dear and treasured R2 unit. Nay! Aye, verily, his mission is supreme, so saith he, he will not hindered be nor from his wayward, stubborn purpose veer. Now with these words young Luke doth quickly run, beyond the shuttered doors with failing hope, and stepping out beneath the setting sun, he scans the vast horizon with his scope. Sir, ever hath that R2 unit been a problem that have vexed me through and through? Astromate droids have ever puzzled me. Their mind have tempers mighty to behold, through all contained in frames of modest size. Fie! How have I so easily been tricked? This R2 hath performed his greatest feat, to vanish scope to wheels into the air. Oh, blast it! I and Fi and Fico's too! Now he is angered. Peace, my master. Peace. Good sir, forgive my impudence, but may we yet this inn go out to searching? Nay, tis far too dangerous. The night is dark, but darker are the dreaded sand people, and dark is most of all their thievery. Thus, as the darkness waits for light to dawn, so must we wait for morning to arrive. O oh, Luke, come hither, swiftly come ye in. The time hath come to darken down the power. Anon, good uncle, thy good word I'll heed. Oh, I shall taste the whips and scorns of my dear uncle's anger. So shall that small droid, though yet far gone, wreak havoc on my soul. And so a restless night doth pass within, while Luke doth ponder future punishment and longs for his lost droid search to begin, C-3PO doth fear his banishment. At early morn with eager wills they rise, a shard endeavour binding them anew. The fast land speeder o'er oh, the desert flies, they go to find the errant droid R2. Good friend, take heed, the scanner doth report a droid ahead. Pray swiftly take us hence, be like our R2-D2 there awaits. Perhaps I'll yet escape my uncle's wrath. While droid and man go racing across the sand, the Tuscan raiders watch the two pass by. Their banthers mounting, gaffy sticks at hand, they heave unto the air their warring cry. Pray whither goest thou, thou naughty droid? Beep, 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 squeak. Nay. Master Luke is now thy rightful owner. Learn obedience, aye, learn thou loyalty. Pray, learn respect, and learn thou not to speak of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Wee, wee, squeak. Speak not to me of mission, droid. I'll warrant, happy thou shalt be, if our new master doth not let thee know the blaster's deadly touch today. Pray, patience, dear C-3PO. Tis well, but let us hence. He doth report that creatures hither come, approaching stealthily from the southeast. Sand people, hither, come and let us see. Unbidden doth adventure come, yet here I stand, prepared to rise and welcome fate. The twisting strand she threads we must but trail, for tis the wire that leadeth us through life. Fate's hand hath placed me here on Tatooine, and now she beckons onward to Thabis. Now over adventures, great abyss, I perch above all time, above the universe, above the rim of chance and destiny, and sister fate doth dare me to look in, and there, I there, I find my happiness, I peer therein, embrace my fate and blink. Come life, for I am ready now to live. I spy two banthers, yet no sand people. Wait, wait, one doth appear unto me now. With sudden viciousness the Tuscans come, they knock young Luke and cause the droid to fall. They seek to take a harshly pillaged sum, till frightened by a false crate dragon call. Now enter I the scene of this boy's life. 
This boy whom I have watched for many years hath grown into the man before me now. My hope I now entrust to him alone, that he might be our sure deliverance. And yet, this situation warrants care. I must approach with caution as we speak and meet his questions as a trusted guide. My inner joy I must with patience hide, for certain tis it gives me great delight to see him now, his face, his golden hair. So long have I watched o'er him from afar, so many hours and days of my life spent in hopeful expectation of this one. In his beginning, I shall find my end. This business shall reveal my final stage. Yet in my closing seem perhaps I'll write a worthy ending to my mortal days. Tis possible that in this gentle one the dream I've long awaited shall come true. So, I'll compose a final act that'll accomplish two most worthy ends, to set the world aright and save this old man's soul. Well met, my little one. Almost I could my metal tongue release and speak to him. This man doth show sure signs of wisdom and experience. Beep, 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 squeak. Come hither, tiny friend. Be not afraid. Beep, squeak, wee hoo Rest easy, lad, for thou hast had a fool. And more adventure hast thou seen today than many in a lifetime, do I say? Thou catchest fortune's favour to survive a cruel attack from sand people most vile. But by this light, tis Ben Kenobi here. It fills my heart with joy and soothes my pain to meet thee. Aye, tis well. But let's go hence. The Junlun wastes are no place for travellers is. Now prithee, good young Luke, say why for art thou here? And what strange errand bringeth thee herein where I am wont to dwell? Destroyed? I truly, he hath brought me here. Beep, beep. It seemeth unto me that he doth search to find his former master. Yet in all my days I ne'er have seen such devotion seen as this one showeth from a droid. Ooh. He claims that he belongeth to a man named Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I thought, perchance, the man some relative of yours may be. Dost thou know any by such name? Oh, how the heart inside me breaks to hear that name I was once called so long ago. But happy fate that tis Luke's voice that calls. I, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh, the name is like a song. Yet were the glorious song of joy or else some dirge of bitter pain, I'm yet unsure. It is a name that I have not heard for lo these many, many years. A long, long time. My uncle knoweth Obi-Wan. I can. He doth report to me the man is dead. Oh, Owen, wretched knave, such base deceit, and yet I know full well why thou so spokest. Should I have acted different in thy place? But nay, the man takes not his final sleep, at least unto this moment now, not yet. Then knowst thou him? I, verily I do. I know the man as if he were myself, for truly I, he is. This Obi-Wan, dear Luke, tis I. By heaven's light, beep me. I have not heard this name, this Obi-Wan, since ere e'en thou thyself wert born. I then, I see this little droid is bound to thee. I have no memory of owning a droid such as this. Tis curious indeed. Now mark thee these my words, we must repair indoors to escape a second cudgelling here. The sand people do easily take flight, but soon they shall return with many more. Beep, 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 squeak! Where am I? Have I taken an ill-timed sleep? In dreams have I seen visions of my death. Ten thousand soldiers pranced upon my grave, and I, alone to face the murderous mass, could only weep at my untimely end. Peace, peace, good droid, thou art alive. Fear not. Canst thou now stand? We quickly must depart before the sand people attack us here and strive to make thy dream reality. Oh, whether dream or waking, I know not. But go thee hence and save thyself, I pray. See, through Pio by nightmare hath been slain. 
this droid shall quickly stretch his welcome thin. I shall not leave thee, droid. Thou speakest sans sense. Come, come, I'll bear thee up, so argue not. What noble care he takes to soothe this droid. We must make haste, or face them yet again. So hence let us away unto my den. Nay, thou art sure misled, O wise one, for my father hath not fought in any wars. Full many evenings as I lay abed, such tales I heard of him I never knew. A navigator on a freighter ship which carried fragrant spices hence to yon. My father was... he kneweth naught of wars. So hath thine uncle told thee. Marry, he did not agree with aught thy father told of his philosophy and brave ideals. Thine uncle, tethered to the land, did not believe thy father should become involved in matters of what stars and empires nay. What shall I of the father tell the child? If gentle Luke knew all that's known to me, I'll warrant he'd not understand the rhyme and reason for my words. And yet, what is it to lie? To tell the truth or else be damned? Or else to tell, perhaps... A greater truth. Is it the truth to tell a boy each fact and thus deface his father's memory? Or have I spoken better truth to Luke than I about his father speak with pride? Aye, every child deserves a champion. Hast thou done battle in the Clone Wars? Aye, and once was I a Jedi Knight, the same as thy dear father. Oh, how tears well up within me for the loss of that dear man, whom never I did know, nor do, nor will. I tell thee truly, amongst the pilots he was ere the greatest in the galaxy. He was also a cunning warrior, and to the last he was a dear, dear friend. And now to play upon his natural sense of self-importance, so to draw him near of thoughts of Jedi training for himself. I hear thou art a pilot skilled as well. This calleth to my mind a gift I have for thee. Thy father has desired that thou shouldst have this weapon when thou wert of age. Thine uncle, though, would none of it, so feared that he thou might adjoin with Obi-Wan upon a fool's crusade or devil's task, just as thy father have when he was young. Dear sir, if thou dost not need me, I shall shut down upon the present moment here. Why speakest he here when tis my time to speak? These droids of protocol are ear uncouth, of etiquette they know but little. Troth. Pray tell, what what is? Thy father's lightsaber. It is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. If thou in thine own hand could hold a son, then thou wouldst know the power of this tool. Not merely random, neither awkward like a blaster. Nay. The lightsaber maintains a noble elegance, a Jedi's pride. Tis something for a civilised new age. Now holdeth Luke the weapon in his hand, and with a switch the flame explodes in blue. The noble light Luke's reverence doth command, that instant was a Jedi born anew. Now doth the force begin to work in him. For many generations, Jedi were the guarantors of justice, peace, and good within the Old Republic. Ere the dark times came, and ere the Empire began to reign. How hath my father died? Oh, question apt. The story whole I'll not reveal to him. Yet may he one day understand my drift. That from a certain point of view, it may be said the answer is the honest truth. A Jedi named Darth Vader. I, a lad whom I had taught until he evil turned, did help the Empire hunt and then destroy the Jedi. Now, the hardest words of all I'll utter here unto this innocent with hope that one day he shall comprehend. He hath thy father murdered and betrayed, and now the Jedi, nearly all extinct. Young Vader was seduced and taken by the dark side of the Force. The Force? The Force doth give a Jedi all his power, 
and tis a field of energy that doth surround and penetrate and bind all things together here within our galaxy. In hearing this wise man, I have almost my errand quite forgot. Now to my work. Beep, meep, meep, squeak, beep, wee, squeak, meep. And now, my little friend, shall I attempt to find out whence thou came, and to discern the reason wherefore thou hast left thy home for lands unknown, a mission to pursue? He hath a message played. Thus have I found. Dear General Kenobi, many years ago thou served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he beggeth thee to come again and aid him in his struggle with the Empire. Sadly, may I not be there with thee in person, my request to give. My ship of late hath fallen under siege, and thus my mission, bringing thee unto Alderaan, my cherished planet, hath failed. Yet have I deep within the memory banks of this brave R2 unit stored the plans most vital for Rebellion's victory. My father can retrieve the plans therein, but I must ask of thee to take the droid and bring him onto Alderaan with care. The desperate hour is now upon us. Please, I beg thee, sir. No, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, help. Thou art mine only hope. The message ends, then doth the silence fall. While Obi-Wan his duty contemplates, young Luke considers whether fate doth call. I in this moment, destiny await. The boy doth hear and hath the taste of fire new burning in his ears. Now shall I play the part of fuel and gently stoke that fire. Thou must be taught the force if thou wouldst come away with me and go to Alderaan. Nay, Alderaan? This man hath many charms, and now it seems to me that I have been these many hours under some great spell that he hath cast. Nay, I must hence back home. Tis late, and Uncle Owen shall be vexed, if I do not return him ere long. And now it must be done, or all else tis lost. I need all thy good help, Luke. And so doth she. For such adventures I have grown too old. Nay, nay, I should not be involved, dear friend. Much work there is to be completed yet, and as the seers say true, a crop without its harvester is like a dew back sands its rider. Verily, I loathe the cruel and noisome empire. I, yet nothing against it, have I power to do at present. Fie, tis all so far, far distant from this place. Thus speaks thine uncle through thy lips, not thee. Mine uncle, O oh mine uncle, how shall I to him explain this matter? Tell me how. Come now with me and learn the force, dear Luke. Now I am split in twain by fate's sharp turns. Two paths, the one toward adventure leads, the other taketh me back to my home. I have for all my life longed to go hence, and now this Obi-Wan hath reason given why I should leave my Tatooine and fly unto the stars. I, he hath told me of the powerful force, and yet another force doth pull me home, the force of duty and responsibility. I would go hence, would fly today and near look back again, except Baru and Owen are my true and loyal family. Tis settled then, I stay on Tatooine until the time when I may leave with clear, unfettered soul. I shall take thee as far as Anchorhead, from there mayst thou find transport to weir ear. Thou ghost I throughout the galaxy. Thou must hold with thy conscience, it is true, whate'er thou thinkest right, thus thou shouldest do. Inside the Death Star. Until this battle station utterly prepared and operational shall be, it is plainly vulnerable to an attack. The rebels have more resources and are more dangerous that thou wilt deign to see. Powers of danger to my Starfleet, aye, but not unto this battle station strong. Rebellion shall gain more support within the Imperial Senate. Oh, these men do talk and quibble like a brood of clucking hens. The Imperial Senate, which thou speakst of here, no longer any threat to us doth hold. 
For truly have I just received word that our great emperor himself dissolved the council. Now the final remnants of the old republic fade away like dew. But Mary, tis impossible. How shall the emperor maintain control without the crimson cord of vast bureaucracy? Oh, how these politicians irk me so. Of governors and territories care I not. But I retain their company for mine own purposes. And though their talk doth tire my mind, I do confess that naught I found hath on their counsel yet improved. For every human bond is meaningless. All family doth leave, and friends betray, and lovers fail, and teachers turn, and thus among the politicians shall I dwell. Where lies deceit and guileless talk do make the universe go round, but yet I vow I'll not be governed by the governors. No policy of politicians heed, instead myself and my dear emperor together shall pursue our destiny. The governors of all the regions now have sole control over their special lands, and fear shall keep the people all in line. Fear of this very battle station. I. But what, pray tell, of the rebellion vile? For if the rebels have the plans to this good station stolen, possible it is they may have found a weakness, which in haste they shall exploit. Pray, Tarkin. Mark my words. Those plans shall soon recovered be, fear not. Attack upon this station pointless is regardless for data they found. I speak not rashly when I hear of her, this station now of power, ultimate over all else in the vast wide universe. And now I privy thee, let us see it used. Nay, peace, I warn thee, man, be not too proud of thy great terror technological. A weapon for the mass destruction of a planet even to destroy it whole, is no match for the power of the Force. Thou shalt attempt to frighten us with words, so like a man of magic Vader nigh, thy sorcerer's act is tired and overdone. The sad religion thou dost cling to have no power to conjure up the stolen plans, nor dost thou have third eye sight to make. The power of the Force is now unveiled, as Vader holds the Admiral in check. The force that Motti, with his words impaled, now hath a wampus hold about his neck. I find thy lack of faith disturbing. Cease! No more of this! Good Vader, let him be. As is thy will. My point hath well been made upon this prideful, unbelieving throat. Enough! This endless bickering shall end! Lord Vader shall provide the setting of the errant rebel base before the time this station shall be operational. And then, my friends, the Empire shall rejoice. Rebellion shall be crushed in one swift stroke. Now, get ye gone. Fulfill this purpose grand. My troopers on the planet Tatooine have traced the creatures who have found the droids. We shall retrieve those plans. Tis well, tis well. Though ever wert a faithful servant to the Empire, Lord Vader, privy go and take with thee a governor's gratitude. There goes a man who hath a mind to serve. The Empire doth hold him in his grasp and lays a claim upon his heart and soul. Well, I recall when, as a younger man, the Empire and Vader with me stood and contemplated our shared destiny. Now Vader, split twixt manhood and machine, fulfills a vital place within my plans. I, though I fear the force, he knows his place. He knows he and I stand side by side, together wrapped in power's warm embrace. Our empire to serve until, at last, the final curtain of life's play is dropped, as history have made this Tarkin great, this battle station now shall make me feared. I am as constant as the Endor moon, and shall rebellion crush, and do it soon. It seemeth that the sand people have done this wretched deed, yon gaffy sticks and tracks of Bantha. 
I, but near in all my years, have Tuscans gone awry so far as this. And they have not, though they who this vile deed have done would make us think sad people did. But hark, take note and look ye thereupon, yon tracks are side by side. Yet sand people tis known, ere one behind the other ride, so better may they hide their numbers large. These Jawas are the very same who sold C-3PO and R2-D2, two unto mine uncle not two days ago. And these marks here, these blast points, are too fine and accurate for sand people, tis true. For only stormtroopers by Empire trained are so precise and cunning in their work. Surveying the scene, I fear what cometh next, for certain have the troops more evil done. Good Owen and Baru, no doubt are slain, and though it breaks my heart to think on it, it may be that their deaths will spark Luke's soul and lead him unto good rebellion's cause. So, by their death, may others find life. But why? Say why would these Imperial troops have aught to do with Jawas? Wait, I see the droids. If they have traced them here, they may have soon discovered whom they sold them to, which, oh, my soul, would lead them to my home. Pray patience, Luke. Tis far too dangerous. Now flies Luke off in his land speeder quick and finds his home engulfed in flames of red. Then spies amid the smoke so black and thick the bodies of his aunt and uncle, dead. A sadder, wiser man he cometh back, with noble purpose now his life's imbued. By wrongful, vicious, cowardly attack, the empire hath Luke's passion quite renewed. T'was nothing thou, Luke, couldst have done had thou been there. Thou murdered would have been as well. I also would the droids now captured be, and would be in the Empire's evil hands. Thou knowest, friend, what I have seen today. No sorrow like to this have I ere known. I wish to come with thee to Alderaan, for nothing have I here on Tatooine. Then shall I learn the Force, and shall become a Jedi, like my father. Thus I vow. So let's prepare, and go upon our way. With haste may we escape the troopers vile. Adventure have I asked for in this life, and now have I too much of my desire. My soul within me weeps, my mind, it runs unto a thousand varied paths. My uncle Owen and my aunt Baru, have they cruelly killed for what I want? So shall I never want again, if in the wanting all I love shall be destroyed. O oh, fie, thou knave adventure, Evil trick of boyhood's minds that ever should one seek to have adventure when one hath a home, a family so kind and full of love, good steady work and vast abundant crops. Why would one give up all this gentle life for that one beastly word, adventure? Fie, but soft my soul, be patient and be wise. The sands of time near turned backward yet, and forwards marches fate, not the reverse. So while I cannot wish for them to live, I can my life commit unto their peace. Thus shall I undertake to do them proud, and take what here adventure comes my way. Tis now my burden, so I'll wear it well, and to the great rebellion give my life. A Jedi shall I be, in all things brave, and thus shall they be honoured in their grave. Now in her cell the princess doth remain, with hope and trouble written on her face. At times she faces torture, horrid pain, with these tools Vader seeks the rebel base. While Leia in her captive state is kept, young Luke and Obi-Wan set on their way. Approaching town they hope to intercept a pilot to transport them sans delay. Moss Isley Spaceport, never shalt thou find a hive more rank and wretched eye and filled with villainy. So must we cautious be. I prithee, speak. How long hast thou these droids? Tis three, or mayhap four full seasons now. We're prepared to sell them, shouldst thou wish. 
Now is the force to noble purpose used, not as the Sith employing it to smite. Hath through the dark side rank the force abused, good Obi-Wan shall use the force for right. Pray, show me now thy papers. Nay, thou dost not need to see his papers. Nay, we do not need to see his papers. True it is that these are not the droids for which thou searchest. Aye, these are not the droids for which we search. And now the lad may go his merry way. Good lad, I prithee go thy merry way. Now get thee hence. Now get thee hence. Go hence. Oh, how those jowers vex me. Get thee gone! Now by my troth I cannot comprehend how we those threatening stormtroopers did scape. I verily I thought our end was nigh. The Force hath mighty power over the weak and simple-minded of this universe. Dost thou believe we shall th therein, in yon dank place, discover any pilot who hath means to transport us to Alderaan? A goodly crew of freighted pilots here may oft be found, but prithee, take good care. The small cantina hath an ill repute. I find myself prepared for everything. The youth hath vigour. Hopefully, judgment too. Now mark thee well, good viewer, what you see. Such varied characters are on display, for never hath there been such company as in Moss Isley gathers day by day. The creatures gather round the central bar, while hammerheads and horned monsters talk, a band composed of aliens bizarre. This is the great cantina thou mayest gawk. A word herein we shall not serve their kind. Thy droids, they must depart beyond these walls. Good friends, Pray wait beside the speeder now, for we desire no conflict here today. I do with all my heart agree, dear sir. He liketh not thy look. F forgive me, sir. Nor do I like his face, yet do I groan. I do not like thy look indeed, young lad. I bite my thumb at thee. Proceed with care, for we two men are wanted by the law. I, I have earned the penalty of death in many systems, and would gladly earn it here as well, if thou provoke me to it. I would, mayhap, be fearful if this man hath even shoulder height on me attained. Careful shall I be. Thou shalt be dead! Pray, peace. This little lad's not worth thy time. Now come. Let us be friends, my goodly sir. Then shall we to thy wealthy and welfare drink. The dark. I have no wish or purpose here to fight, yet have these drunkards left me little choice. But there is yet a lesson to be learned. This Obi-Wan, though old, hath still the gift. Chewbacca here doth service as first mate upon a ship that may our purpose meet. On Solo at thy service, gentlemen, the Great Millennium Falcon is my ship. My first mate Chewie telleth me ye seek safe passage to the system older on. Aye, true, if tis a vessel swift of flight. A vessel swift of flight, thou says. Hast thou not heard of the Millennium Falcon, sir? Now shall he boast. But if his ship we'd have... Some boasting will endure. Nay, should I have? Tis but the ship that have the Kessel Run accomplished in twelve parsecs, nothing more. Imperial starships have I slightly scaped, but nothing more of that. And neither do I speak about bulk cruisers, small but fast. Coraline ships, yet nothing more, no more. I shall not brag about her speed, good sir. Suffice to say, the ship shall fill thy needs as to fast as air, but nothing more. Aye, nothing more. I wish he'd hold his peace. This man, it seems, doth love his ship far more than ere I saw a man his woman love. Pray tell, 
What shall the cargo be? Myself, the boy, two droids, and near a question asked. Tis what? A touch of local trouble here? Nay, um, let us simply say it thus. We would imperial entanglements avoid. Aye, there's the rub. So shalt thou for ever pay. Ten thousand is the cost in every bit. Shalt thou deliver here, we leave the dock. Ten thousand? Fie! We could our own ship buy for such a sum as this. A goodly jest. For who should pilot such a ship? Shouldest thou? Thou knave, I could indeed. A pilot skilled am I in my own right. Now, should we stay and be abused more by this man's words? Two thousand can we render to thee now, and fifteen more deliver when we come within safety unto Alderaan's bright port. Say, seventeen? Congratulations, men. Thou hast a ship secured, and well depart whene'er thou art prepared. Thou shalt find me at Docking Harbour number ninety-four. Aye, ninety-four. It seemeth that thou may have already provoked some interest. Seventeen? So must they desperate be. This truly may my swift deliverance prove. Go thou unto the ship and be prepared. In times now past have I poor judgments made. And now these errors plague my very soul. For freedom I was made for taking wing, yet as a marked man I cannot fly. For bound by debts, by duty, and by fear, I live my life along the razor's edge. One part of me that hunts for a better life. One part hunted for the life I've led. My own existence is a paradox. A smuggler with a lover's kindly heart. A gambler with a noble spirit brave. I would be better than it seems I am. If ever I transcend the man I was. Perhaps this new employment shall reveal the way I shall make straight my crooked path. Thus heal my past and write a future new. Naku natuta solo. Yes, indeed, good Greedo, I have planned to make my way unto thy master. Tell thou Jabba plain, I have obtained his money. Sorry, Peshle, Namara Tram Pichok Makachisa, Najaba Vaninchi Koth Pamurishan. Tot ying yuanya yoska? He he he. Najaski no ye kuchusku. Tis true. Yet this time is the money truly mine. Kelly Chalia Chulka and Tinkun Kus This bounty hunter doth my patience try. Nay, nay, I have not money with me now. Tell Jai I Garu Puya Enya Arokago Shuku Shumu Pua Yippi But even I from time to time have boarded been. Dost thou believe that I had the choice? Roja na pack me apnya apna. Nay, not that. The day when Jabba taketh my dear ship shall be the day you find me a grave man. Ne usle numa, just peka nufa na krinko kenko and na jos kanya. I true, I warrant thou hast wished this day. <laughs> Pray, goodly sir, forgive me for the mess, and whether I shot first, I'll near confess. The princess hath shown great resistance to the mind probe, to as if she knew the force and hath the Jedi's blood to overcome the piercing of her mind by a machine. Belike it shall some length of time yet be until we can extract the thoughts therein. The final tests are now complete and thus my news. The Death Star stands prepared. I, fully operational it is, Governor, what course shall we now set? Perhaps the stubborn princess shall respond to an alternative persuasiveness. I prithee, Tarkin, say, what dost thou mean? Pray patience, Darth, thou shalt my meaning learn. Now time it is the power of this Death Star shown to all shall be. Now, Admiral, go forth and set thy course to Alderaan. I understand thee with pride, obey. The death of innocence doth bring me joy. Because the dark side is my chosen path, the senseless end of others pains me not. For I have played the part of Judge Severe, and then have been the executioner. 
Why would I care for those on Alderaan when I have murdered innocents as they? Tis my dark calling which I do embrace. To Alderaan we fly on course direct, and to this feast of death I'll not object. Scene 3, Moss Eisley, on the desert planet, Tatooine. I prithee, lockest thou the door, anon? Hmm, this door is locked. And as my father oft hath said, a locked door no mischief makes. So sure am I that thus behind this door cannot be found the droids for which we search. And thus may we move on with conscience clear. I'll tell thee true. I would with Master Luke prefer to go than now remain with thee. I do not know what trouble here may be, yet certain am I thou deserves the blame. I'll warrant thou shalt have thy recompense. Squeak! <whistles> Beep! me, me, me. Squeak! Hold thou thy cursing and most cursed tongue. Thou must thy speed assail. That matters not, for near shall I return unto this place. Young Luke doth with a buyer swiftly meet, and in a trice a hasty deal is wrought. A speed is sold along a dusty street, but with the sale new chance for hope is bought. A paltry sum, in truth. I, ever since the XP38 hath been released, this model hath but little value. Fie! Fear not, we shall suffice. Twill serve our need. Now! While young Luke and Obi-Wan prepare, their deeds are watched by eyes as yet unseen. With black beak menacing, he spies the pair. Then comes another fiend with portly mien. Ba solo, hai lapano ya solo. Now marry, tis an unexpected scene. I hear thou jabber, slimy and rotund. I have awaited long thy coming here. Boo no a tweepy. Nay, nay, thou dost not think that I should run, didst thou? Nahan mi buki. Kili, kleya kuk. Wantad amulira. Muunkichi. Sakrispo grido. Next time thou dost wish to counsel with me. Pray, come thyself, send not to thy curlish, dismal, dreaming knaves. Han, han, make cheese, eh? Pass out on a ono kulki malai. E yungi, imperio lo tiso, tuaspas di qualno, yana di puno. Nay, see here. As I have said before, O oh, verily, tis though I just have said thus. Even I from time to time have boarded been. Dost thou believe that er, I had the choice? Ay, true. It sometimes seem if I repeat myself. Now have I, though a simple child have found, and soon as it is done, thy payment shall be done as well. Be like with interest. I need but time. I shall do it, sir. No, Han Mabuki. Bargon yana kot da ita. Siva luto twinti i yavana. Nay, say thou not so much. Fifteen per cent, our warrant shall be well. Siva luto i thin i yavama du kimasa i thuanchit kopana gina mit to buki dunko lochoda. O Jabba, thou wert a kindly soul. Boska. Now, if yon ship is truly fast, as quick as this Han Solo boasted so, we shall do well. What folly fallen ship is this? What rough honed wayward scut is here? Point five past light speed shall she make, my lad. Now truly earn if she low marks for looks, but still a finer spirit have no ship. Full many small improvements have I made to render her even faster than before. Now, merry gentlemen, if thou agree, we shall be off and speedily from here. And if thy mouth insulteth it again, I promise, boy, thy face shall meet my hand. But ere the ship departs with the sandy dock, 
the stormtroopers appear with massive threat. Informed by the beat spy's traitorous talk, they come upon the ship with weapons set. Pray stop yon ship. Die! Blast them to the stars! Chewbacca, pretty hence. Now let us go. Oh, travelling in space. It works me, whoa! Mos Eisley now is left behind at last, while newer scenes come into view apace. As Han's Millennium Falcon flies far fast, the action of our play moves back to space. Now are we followed hard upon by an Imperial cruiser. Verily, these passengers of great import must be, for they the Empire hotly are pursued. Chupaka, prithee swift make our defence and angle the deflector shield whilst I make plain the calculations for light speed. Now vigilance, my Wookiee. Quickly come to further ships to try and block our path. Nay, wherefore canst thou not outrun them both? For thou didst boast of this strange vessel's speed. Again, he prattles on about the ship. O oh, would that I have left him on the ground. Pray, mark thy words, lad, else thou surely wilt become like refuse to a star destroyer and float away to vanish midst the stars. I'll warrant we shall soon in safety fly, once we hit the jump to hyperspace can make, and what is more, my skill doth all exceed at making keen manoeuvres. All my life have I escaped one scrape yet one more. Well I remember when, as a boy, I chased a nerf whilst on a speeder bike through rocky field in harsh terrain we went, within a round and backward was our game. I caught the nerf that splendid day, but I, it seems I have been dodged ever since. How long now, ere thou canst achieve light speed? A few more moments shall it take whilst this computer doth its navigation work. But art thou mad? For certain, they approach. I have not made this journey just to die. This man shall surely be the end of me. The travel unto hyperspace is not the same as thine are dusting off the crops upon thy land of infinite dry sand. Sans calculations, quite exact, we would be like run through a belt of asteroids, or hit upon a planet's centre mark. Should such our fate become, thy trip would end before it had begun. But oh, what now? What light through yonder flashing sensor breaks? It marks the loss of yonder deflector shield. I bid thee peace, now sit and thou take heed, for all's prepared to jump onto light speed. Hand graspeth quick the console in his hand, then suddenly the ship is bathed in light, with roar of engine noise profound and grand, the great Millennium Falcon takes her flight. Ah, Governor Tarkin, scurvy knave art thou. Now seems it plain to me that Vader doth perform the part of docile dog unto the sickening whining of his master's voice. Familiar stench of dog's best friend have I marked deep within my sense of smell, e'en when I came aboard this station. Ever wert thou charming, Leia, even to the last. Thou couldst not comprehend how hard it was. I verily, how did I sigh and weep to give the order to destroy thy life? Surprised am I thou had the courage so to take responsibility for such as this unto thy cowardly, small self. She groweth ever bolder which doth but increase my appetite to see her scream. My princess, if thou executed art, I would thou join me for a moment full of pomp and circumstance, for at this grand and noble ceremony shall the power of this great battle station here be shown to be quite fully operational. Now, no star system shall e'er dare oppose the Emperor. Oh, but how wrong thou art! The more that thou dost exercise thy grip, the more star systems through that grip shall fall. Not after we have shown the power of art, this battle station shall to them display. Until a point, thou hast determined what the primary demonstration of its force shall be. Which planet shall oblivion face? Now, shall I drive this nail unto its home and watch with joy as she with grief is torn? 
since Val has so refused to grant us the hid location of the rebel base, I shall unleash this station's power upon thine own home planet. Even Alderaan. Nay, do not so to peaceful Alderaan. Thou shalt a military target name, then render swift the system's name as well. Or else thy precious Alderaan goes to it. I tire of asking Oa and Oa so thus, I promise. This shall be the final time. Where is thy rebel base? On Datooine. They may be found on planet Datooine. Ha ha, thou ceased, Vader. How a cat may have her claws removed. Now, Admiral, thou mayst continue with thy weapons test. And surely mayst thou fire when all's prepared. What madness here! Thou far too trusting art. The tiny Datanui is too remote to show this station's power, but pray, fear not. We shall in time thy rebel friends pursue. To do the governor's most evil will, the people on the Death Star quickly rise. mighty flash, the beam bursts bright and shrill, and Alderaan is shattered for their eyes. The instant Alderaan is smashed to bits, Luke tries his lightsaber. A keen trainee, the droids and Wookiee play a game of wits, but Obi-Wan doth sense catastrophe. Now breaks my heart as through the force I sense the suffering of many worthy souls. I know not what this doth pretend, and yet I fear the worst. Good sir, how far is thou? Forsooth, a great disturbance in the force have I just felt. It was like a million mouths cried out in fear at once. And then were gone, all hushed and quiet. Silent to the last. I fear a stroke of evil hath occurred. But thou, good Luke, thy practice recommence. Thou mayest all thy troubles now forget. The imperial knaves have been outrun at last. Well, here's a solemn gathering indeed, quite lacking in the proper gratitude. Nay, speak thou not thy thanks too heartedly, else shall thy praise go swiftly to my head. And here's the point, we shall at her order on arrive ere long. Pray, Artu. Caution show. Beep. Squeak, beep, 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 beep. Mm, mm. A fair move hath he made, thou furry lump. No use is there in screaming o'er the loss. However, did I join this company? A Wookiee and his smuggler captain? Oh. Mm. 
Be thou wise, droid. Mark well what thou dost. As it is said, black holes are worth thy fear, but fear thou more, Wookiee's deadly wrath. But, sir, no proverb warns the galaxy of how a droid may hotly angered be. Aye, marry, tis because no droid have her torn out a joint of another being's arms upon a lesser insult in than this. But Wookiees, golden droid, are not so tame. Mm. Brute! The fool I'll play with thee, indeed, yet I perceive thou and thy friend have heart. Remember, Luke, the Force doth smoothly flow within the feelings of a Jedi Knight. But doth the Force control one's every move? Tis somewhat so, but also shall the Force obey thine every command, young Luke. This Force by troth I'll never comprehend. It doth control and also doth obey. And tis within and yet is beyond. Tis both inside and yet outside oneself. What paradox! What fickle natured power! I, freightly, thy name belike is force. Ilak, this small remote hath struck again. Ha <laughs> ha, thy errant systems of belief, thy weapons ancient, all thy mysteries, thy robes and meditation over the air, thy superstitions in thy precious force, cannot compare to my religion true. A trusty blaster ever by my side, with thus I say my prayers and guard my soul. Devoted follower must thou be with such a speech. Pray, tell me, pilgrim reverent, dost thou most truly disbelieve the Force? A pilgrim truly said, for I have gone from galaxy to galaxy and more. Yet never have this faithful worshipper found aught to recommend that strange belief, a single Force that binds the universe. True, tis no power mystical controls, hands Solo's yet unfinished destiny. And so I preach the one and only faith. My simple merry tricks are all my gods, and nonsense is the only testament I worship at the shrine of my own will. A wise philosopher, if ere there was. I'll warrant he hath character he hides. Now prithee, try again and lay aside thy conscious self. Take thou this helmet thick, adorn thine eyes with silver shield opaque, and trust thine instincts only as thy guide. But surely tis a jest. For with the shield I nothing now can see. How can I fight? I, truly fight or walk or even stand, without one sight but little can be done. Nay, tis in blindness one doth truly see. For eyes deceive and sight is known to lie. Let feelings be thy sight, their guidance trust. With mind unsure look readies for the fight. The small remote doth dodge most suddenly, but with calm mind Luke blocks his lasers bright. With inner eye, the force has let him see. Hurrah! Thou canst do it! Tis luck, no more. Experience hath taught me much, dear man, and none of it has shown me the aught of luck. To find success against a small remote is well, and taketh skill, I do confess. To find such against a living soul, however, also taketh excellence. It seem if we draw nearer to Alderaan. I did feel something. Obi-Wan, tis true. It seems I've fixed my soul's eye on Thremote. Seems, young one. Nay, thou didst. Think thou not seems. Thou hast thy first step taken toward a world far greater than thou now canst understand. And thus begins, if I have seen aright, his transformation into Jedi Knight. My lord, our scout ships have reached Dantooine. Remains of the rebel base the scouts have found. Yet surely have that been a length of time deserted. Now shall they begin to search surrounding systems so to find the base. The witch have lied! Deceiving cutthroat girl! Most cunning princess born of hell's own heart! I knew full well she ne'er would betray her prized rebellion whilst in her right mind. And thus I said, she ne'er should have our trust. Destroy her! Tis a sentence more than just. Now dropping out of Lightspeed's frantic rush, we enter swift unto the area where should there be great Alderaan in view. But pray, what madness meets the Falcon's flight? Is this an asteroid field I see before me? The ship have wrought a course, direct and true, and yet no Alderaan may here be found. O errand vile, O portents of great ill, 
What shall it mean when planets are no more? For those who make their wages by the stars. What news, good Han? The ship's position hits the mark, and yet no Elderon is here. I pray thee, marry, say, what canst thou mean? How can a planet vanish in the air? Thou hast said right, my lad. It is not there. The planet's gone, all turned to rock and ash. Thou speakest not right. Say how. Pray how. Tell how. Destroyed it was. And by the Empire, cruel. A thousand thousand ships could not destroy the planet. Truly, twould take greater power than ever was known to humankind. But soft, another ship approaches quick. Belike they can the tale to us relate. Imperial fighter tis. Hath it made chase? Nay, nay. A short range fighter tis. Oh, how this situation here doth give me pause. No base is there nearby. Whence cometh it? The courage in me melts away at this. My boast cannot resolve this mystery. The ship departeth swiftly. If they have identified our lot, we shall have strife. Tis my intent to keep us from that fate. Chewbacca, render its transmissions blocked. Pray, let it go. Tis too far flown. Not long. Dost thou agree, a fighter of its size, this deep in space could not have come alone? Belike, twas in a group and now is lost. It shall not live to tell the tale today. Forsooth. He makes his way to that small moon. I may play checkmate on him ere he lands. Alas, I sense the game, and we're the pawns. That is no moon. Tis a space station there. Tis far too large a space station to be. Pray, turn thee now the ship around. I shall. Now, Chewie, lock thou quick the auxiliary power. Why do we still approach? What can be done? It have the advantage using tractor beam to pull us in unto its landing bay. But pray, some move thou must have left to make. My moves are finished, lad. I must shut down, else shall the ship entire soon come apart. But still, with all my players, I shall fight. Thou canst not win, but will by strategy some good alternatives to fighting see. So enters the Millennium Falcon in. Unto the Death Star, grand and stark. To be continued.